Hi guys, my name is Xander, I am 16 years old, and my favorite dinosaur is the Corophosaurus. Hi, my name is Bryson, I'm 13, and my favorite dinosaur is the Spinosaurus. Hi, my name is David, I am 14 years old, and my favorite dinosaur is the Dromaeosaurus. Hi guys, my name is Roman, I am 15 years old, and my favorite prehistoric marine reptile is the Dinosaurus. <laughs> This is the Paleo Group. Paleo, Paleo Group of Taurus. So, when's lunch? Really, dude? Why? I got hungry. Well, hello, everyone. Um, it's me, um, Xander, the guy that's Rebel Studio. Um. Today, I'm here with my three of our friends, um, David, Roman, and Bryson. Say hi, guys. Hey. So, um, yeah, it's really great to do this collab of all of you guys. It's been a long time since the last time we spoke, right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, so, um, so guys, since for our first podcast episode, we decided to talk about our favorite dinosaurs and also our prehistoric creatures. Well, one of them chose a prehistoric green reptile. And so, um, also, guys, before we start doing the, our talk show, um, the people who that's watching this podcast, if you want to um, comment or suggest a dinosaur or, or a pterosaur or a main reptile, just comment below and one of us could talk about it in the next episode. And it could be more than one uh, request. Anyway, um. All right, let's start. So, since uh, Bryson, since you are the youngest, why don't you go first? Okay. So my dinosaur is the Spinosaurus, and um, that's what I'll be talking about. And behind Spinosaurus, there's been a a lot of evolution with it. Um, in the 1900s, there was it started off as a upright tyrannosaur-looking dinosaur that dragged its tail. And in the 2000s, that's when the evolution really started to come along. So, uh, and I'm going to say it's just kind of like hunched over and not upright. And uh, it's it's now became more narrow and alligator-like. And its tail was slim. Everything, you guys know what it, what it looks like. It's yeah. It's really dressed for free. And then now, like, in... 2019, it became this four-legged walking, knuckle-walking dinosaur with a big old paddle tail. And, uh, but today, uh, it's basically just like that. And, but Spinosaurus truly wasn't a knuckle-walking theropod. It was just like every normal theropod that walks on two legs. That's what I've learned from the video today. And... I've also heard that Spinosaurus is not a great swimmer from multiple sources. And for example, it's like a sea turtle on land. It struggles to move around in the water. So basically, it can't move that well in water. But it still goes into the water to catch food. If it can't catch aquatic animals, then it would go for small dinosaurs. If the Spinosaurus could swim, it could not swim that fast. For example, if it were to race Michael Phelps, a competitive swimmer, it would lose. And if it tried to dive down to catch fish, it would fail. It would just be stuck trying to dive down in one motion, moving its arms and legs. But it's actually very unlikely it would try to dive down in the water to catch its prey. That's all I have. Wow, that's actually... Okay, that's very interesting because I remember that the Spinosaurus was was thought to be aquatic swimmer, right? But, like, no, it's actually not. That's, That's pretty crazy. Yeah. And it's just so crazy how, like, the Spinosaurus, like, used to change. Like, it used to be, like, like, for example, you still walk on two legs, now it walks on all fours or something, and then, like, his tail. His tail used to be just, like, just, you know, a regular tail, but then it turned to, like, an eel-like. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Spinosaurus has one of the weirdest um, designs, but still, it's new paleontology and stuff, and we had to accept it. Hey, Xander, you should pull up a picture of me with the Spinosaurus in the future. <laughs> yeah, I should I should definitely do that. And all right, so uh, what do you guys think about the Spinosaurus facts? I think that was really interesting to know about. What was your favorite part, or what's one that made you really like wow? Well, the 
one that made me really surprised was the fact that it wasn't actually an aquatic dinosaur. Yeah, that that was shocking too. Like Roman, was the same thing with you? I mean, I've always thought that it was more. It was actually like one of the only dinosaurs that could actually swim, but. That just surprised me. I mean, keep in mind, it could swim, but just not like in deep, shallow water, right? It's kind of like, um, yeah. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Um, Bryson, thank you for telling us your fact about the Spinosaurus. That was really interesting. Now let's move on to your next person. Um, David, you are next. So, so the dinosaur that I'm going to be talking about is my favorite dinosaur, the Dromaeosaurus. Awesome. Can't wait to hear it. Okay, so the Dromaeosaurus name is Swift Running Lizard because it can run up to 20 to 40 miles per hour, which will make it one of the second placers in the dinosaur world. Nice. Okay, okay. Cool. It will make it almost as fast as a horse and almost as fast as an ostrich. Nice, nice. Horse and an ostrich. That's crazy. I know the ostriches are fast runners, too. Yeah, that's... Dromaeosaurus, almost as fast. That's quite a fast dinosaur. Yeah, that, that's true. As some of you may know, the Dromaeosaurus is in the same family as the Velociraptor, which means it hunts in packs, and that it has a curved claw on each of its feet. Mm -hmm. Really interesting. Yeah, that's Just like some uh, raptors... It would attack its claw. It would have attacked by kicking its claws out. Wow. Yeah, that's one common trait behind all dromaeosaur dinosaurs. And some people may not know this, but the dromaeosaurus was also oh a really good climber too. It could climb. Yeah, it could actually like use its claws to climb up trees. It used to. Uh, go up to things like bird nests, or if it, uh, or if its prey was high up in the trees, it could go up there and ambush it. That wow! I never knew about that. Wow, that's kind of that's crazy, man. Your claws are very grippy. <laughs> and thanks to its good senses, it it has great vision and a really good sense of smell. The uh, smell its prey from a far distances. Hmm. Is that all you got? Yeah, is that everything? Yep, and I hope you all enjoyed my time talking about my favorite dinosaur. So, like, David, I gotta be honest. Um, there was a lot of facts that made me like really interesting. Um, the one where it could climb. I mean, like, like oh, I, yeah. I, that was shocking. I like, dude, like his size. Like, like, wait, is a dromaeosaurus about like the same uh, size as a wolf? You would say. Uh, about two to three feet. Yeah, so like, do like to his size. I mean, that's actually crazy how it's able to climb. Uh -huh. And even something running fast as a horse or an ostrich, that's that's super cool. Um, yeah, like ostriches run up to forty-five miles per hour. So I'd say that's probably somewhere the same in place as an ornithomimus, which would be the world's fastest dinosaur. Probably, yeah. All right. Um, you guys have any uh things to say about the Dromaeosaurus facts? Uh, I'm surprised that uh, it can climb because that that can show me that Dromaeosaurus claws were good ripping onto things. And uh, Roman. Uh, I'm surprised that it can like run as fast as a horse. Like that is insane. Like. I wonder how it can like move fast without getting tired. Like I, I just wondered it. I just wonder if the dromaeosaurus ever got tired when he. Well, the horses are faster, but since it can run up to forty miles per hour, I'd say it. I'd say it's somewhere in between that. Yeah, that's pretty interesting. All right. Um. Uh, David, thank you for telling us this fact. That's really incredible, and I'm so and I'm so shocked with all that the facts. Now, uh, Roman, it's your turn. So go ahead and tell us what you got. All right. So this is a marine reptile that most of you guys may know as the Dinosuchus, and this crocodile 
is one of the most terrifying crocodile to ever exist. Um, and its name means terrible crocodile because you you guys you guys get the idea. Um, so the so the so the dinosaur's size it was very big. It was so big that it was bigger than the than the T Rex. Uh, I mean, it was it was like larger in every category. Um, so although so although that no that no skeleton was was had ever been discovered of dinosaurus. Um, still, the discovery of new specimens and years and the, and the old ones have given insight to the, to the, to the dinosaurus. Um, uh, the dinosaurus was a first true crocodilian. Um, so that means that the dinosaurus had more in common with today's crocodiles. I mean, as the alligator and those kind of things. Um, so actually, the, so the, so so the dinosaur hat has gotten his name because it was honored by the paleontologist David Schroeder oh. um, for his research into the dinosaurus. The dinosaurus lived in eastern North America, and um, its skull, the, its skull was a bit different. It looked basically like an alligator snout that had been inflated at the end. Um, so, like, the shape of the skull is very distant from any other crocodile. Um, and they had a, um, they had a powerful bite, like a very powerful bite. And it, so, as far as the hunting goes, um, the, uh, the dinosuchus, um, so he would sneak up on his prey in the water and then jump out. And he's surprised. Just, you know, do what he does. That's it. Wow. Oh, awesome. that's okay. Um, that's actually pretty interesting. I mean, the dinosaur is it's it's not like one of the biggest crocodiles of all time, but it was it was in the top three, right? And then like um, he probably had like a strongest powerful bite. So that's yeah, a crocodile. Some research right now, and it's. It has a pi force of one hundred and two thousand and seven hundred fifty newtons. Dang! One wow. thing that surprised me about the facts that Roman shared is that its skull looks like alligators, but it got inflated. Yeah, I, I understand where you're coming from, though. Its its uh skull is kind of fat, and its <laughs> use shape too. Yeah. There's actually a difference between alligators and crocodiles and one of the main differences is the shape of their skull or snout um I, i'm sorry if i get this wrong but i'm pretty sure that uh crocodiles have v-shaped skulls and alligators that's have correct u- yeah alligators have u-shaped skulls yeah that that's yeah. that's true yeah not to mention that croc- a crocodile's bottom teeth sticks out of its mouth while while an alligator's teeth doesn't Yes, that's true. I gotta be honest. I feel like um the prehistoric crocodiles or alligators, like the dinosaurs, I feel like it's one of the most easiest things to reconstruct on what the thing looked like because we have modern crocodiles and alligators today, right? So, yeah, so yeah. they're basically the same thing. I mean, yeah, there's nothing really that much different rather than size. So I'm and then sure. like change the facial details, so it's pretty easy to reconstruct, right? Yeah, that's true. Right? Yeah, but as I was like, like I said, Roman, thank you for telling us this facts. This is really interesting. Yeah, you're welcome, my man. So, all right, so Xander, tell us about the dinosaur you're gonna be talking about. Well, I guess it's my turn, eh? Well then, um, so um, for what I'm gonna talk about is my all-time favorite dinosaur. It is the Corythosaurus, and um. Yeah, oh. Corypho- the Corypho-saurus. So luckily for me, the helmet head. yes, that's so. Yeah, so actually, his name even means helmet lizard because it was it was because yeah, sorry, its name means helmet lizard because of the cool crest on its head. Um, so Corypho-saurus lived lived in Canada during the late Cretaceous period, about seventy five million years ago. Um, Corypho-saurus could grow up to thirty feet long and weigh up about four tons. So it was an average size to all hadrosaurs. So, oh, that's heavy, man. Yeah. Four tons. Yeah, yeah. Um, the Corythosaurus was a herbivore, so its teeth and beak suggested that it 
it like prefers softer vegetarian food. Um, sure. And the difference between the Cryptosaurus and Parasolophorus, um, another hadrosaur, um, is that they're crests. So Parasolophus crests were like more like longer, right? More longer, you could say. But the Cryptosaurus were just like, like an oval like shape, you could say, half of it. Um, uh, it prob. Um, was a very vocal dinosaur because they found uh, nasal passageways in the skull. And they think, and some paleontologists and scientists could believe it was a very vocal dinosaur. They say it could use the sound to alert others for food, a call for a mate, or a predator that's coming. Speaking of, speaking of, speaking of crests, um, different crest size of crevasaurs have been found. So what I mean by that is that based on what we know, similar animals would have the same kind of sex, you could say. So like, so the male crevasaurs would have the longer crest, big ones, and the females would have like the short ones. Something weird, Um, for the time, we believe that crevasaurs and other hadrosaurs were semi-aquatic. This was, su this suggested to believe that they probably ate um like plants underwater. And also, some scientists found that they thought were web feet, but um, but new evidence has debunked this theory. And and while they would have preferred softer plants, the crest was not uh, suited for underwater breathing. And also, like the web feet turn out to be padded. And something else crazy, the crevasaurs have solved one of the greatest dinosaur mysteries of all time. So, we used to think that when we first think about dinosaur skin, we thought of it looked like scaly and kind of like crocodiles, you could say, reptiles. Um, in 1911, one of the first Cryptosaurus uh, specimens was discovered in Alberta, Canada, and it revealed something amazing. Um, the specimen was particularly, particularly covered in what looked like skin. The dinosaur was mummified. Closer ex examination revealed that Cryptosaurus skin had a pebbly texture. Based on this find, it seems logically that some non feathered dinosaurs had similar skin. These non animal mommies are rare, but they give us even deeper look at what these animals were like. And um, that's what I got about the Cryptosaurus. Awesome. And a Montosaurus mommy was also found once before. Also, yeah. um, I believe in, uh, I believe in Edmontonia or Borapelta mummy has been found, and it's on display in the Royal Tyrol Museum. I don't know which one it is, so mm. I don't know what dinosaur it is. Yeah. Oh, and if I also might add, um, Xander, did you know that how, um when Charidosaurus are babies, they don't actually have the crest yet? Hmm, that's actually really interesting. I mean, it would kind of make sense, right? Because, you know, they're babies, right? And then when they grow, every feed will, like, grow. Yeah, but, but actually, yeah. I never heard about that before, but it makes sense, right? One fact that and, the me, oh. name is, and the Corythosaurus' full name is actually Corythosaurus cassowarius. Uh, and the second part means it actually looks like a cassowary bird. Yeah, that's, that's actually the thing. That's, like, that bird, I mean... The sounds are actually kind of terrifying. It sounds like that's um. One of the most dangerous. I'm pretty sure that's the most dangerous bird on the earth. Yeah, but the one thing that sucks is that some of them are actually like their popularity is like going low for a little bit. So like we have to bring them. We have to make them like rise up. Yeah. Also, I've, um, another thing to add. Um, the Corythosaurus, you know, like he was like one of the loudest herbivores like ever. Like he was like, like he like. His like his voice was like so loud, and he would use that sound to communicate with other the sources. Yeah, exactly. One thing that surprised me is that scientists actually believe they were semi-aquatic with webbed feet. Yeah, yeah that's, that surprised me too. Yeah, I because I mean, like, I mean, like, think of it. It's like ducks. You know, ducks have webbed feet, right? Mm -hmm. So, like, they thought about that, but no, because new evidence were, were debunked that theory, and then like, yeah, which that was kind of interesting. I mean, like, I would, I, mean, I could, I, I, I believe that it'd be realistic for them to, like, walk into the water. Yeah. But probably not, like, swim. Yeah, because, I mean, 
I would actually kind of understand why they thought about that because the crest, it looks like a, a snorkeler, right? To breathe on the water, but exactly. But it's since like looking at the skull, Santa. but since looking at the skull, it's just like it just shows the nasal passageway. So this is where it proves that it's a vocal dinosaur. So actually, another thing I want to talk about actually is that um I saw a video where um these people like had like a, a huge skull of it and like they were able to blow it through a hole and it made this sound. It didn't sound like a trumpet. It sounded like a low, deep, like... It's like trying to make, like, a, a your first time playing a, a trumpet or a French horn. It would sound bad, but this one, it was, like, really deep. But it's, like, very, like, horn-like. That, that reminds me of the uh, the Velociraptor vocalization recreation um, in uh, Jurassic Park 3, where <laughs> it's a gift to Alan Grant. Yeah, yeah, that's, that kind of... Yeah, it's... You, it's kind of close like that, but yeah, I get you. you mean and he, with blows, the he blows through it to communicate with the raptors so that then they don't kill them because he had their eggs, or yeah. Billy did. I'm actually glad that Jurassic Park 3 actually added the Crivosaurus in the film and able to get some screen time, which I was happy with it. Oh, uh, you also want to know something else? What's up? Uh, you know the, you know the person who just... Who first discovered the Corythosaurus, right? Yes, it is uh, Barn Brown. Well, Barn Brown was also the same person who first discovered the Dromaeosaurus. And the T-Rex. Jinx. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I, I'm kind of surprised. Barn Brown has found a lot of dinosaurs we know about. Like T-Rex, Corythosaurus, oh, Dromaeosaurus. Yeah. Like, and yeah. It's pretty you incredible. Know a really crazy fact about evolution of the Brachiosaurus. So, uh, I recently watched a video on evolution of the Brachiosaurus, and today it's actually saying that their crest wasn't on the top of their head, wasn't nasal airways, uh, and the the nostrils were actually on their like were uh, by its mouth, like humans. Yeah, I mean, I actually I think I a little bit heard about that information before on YouTube. All right, so I think that's enough talking for dinosaurs today. Um, thank you guys for watching this podcast. We really enjoy talking about each fact. And also, again, if you want to request a dinosaur, pterosaur, or marine reptile, just comment below, and either me, David, Roman, or Bryson will talk about it in the next episode. Yeah, if you want, if you guys want to hear about a Cenozo Cenozoic mammal, then comment down too. Kind of like the woolly mammoth. Basically, any other prehistoric animal. Yeah, okay. Prehistoric, yes. all right, all right. Any, all right, animal, yeah. Same thing with that, too. Also, uh, guys, thank you so much for coming here and just joining this podcast. I really had fun talking about dinosaurs and our prehistoric stuff. Thank this you is for having us. Anytime. Thank you for, and, and I can't wait to do more of this in the Thanks future. Thanks for having me part of this. Yep. All right, guys. Have a good day. You guys in watching this video... Have a great day too, and so long, everyone. See you. Bye.